So, I made the team. <laughs> I'm sure most of you guys have already seen it on, I posted about it on Instagram. Also, did I rock my teeth? I just ate, sorry. So it's the day after, so to backtrack a little bit. So yesterday was our team trials day, and so I had one race, one run with Kaylee. It was supposed to be on Friday, so we were supposed to race Thursday and Friday. I was on Friday. Each pilot took two races, which includes two runs. So two runs Thursday, two runs Friday. It had to be pushed back, so we raced um, Friday, Saturday. Obviously very nervous going into it, um, but felt good. I mean, I'd be more worried going into any competition if I wasn't nervous <laughs> more than being nervous. So that was good. And uh, yeah, I felt ready. I just, you know, I think with stuff like this, you know, when you know, cause I knew the team was going to get announced, um, you know, hours, if not a day later after this race. And you know, it's easy to get ahead of yourself and start to go down the path of like, oh my gosh, this would be so amazing and how much fun and the feeling of getting my name announced for the team. And I just really tried to remind myself that you know, all of that stuff is gonna take care of itself and all I can do is control what I'm doing in the moment, in the race and you know, it doesn't make sense to not be in the moment now. So that's what I was really focusing on, was in the race, not worrying about, oh, I need to go this time or whatever it was. I was just focusing on my hit and yeah, and then just going for it. <laughs> um, and it, it felt really good. Um, was my fastest run since I've been here. And you know, it's crazy that like, even before I was talking to my mom on the phone, um, also it was funny, I told, Connor told me, uh, mostly joking, that my uh, rant for this video had to be uh, sub five minutes, which I was like, that's not gonna happen. So leading into this, um, actually now I forget. I'm running on like two hours of sleep, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, leading up to trials, so I knew that, you know, we were still all going to take a break for Thanksgiving, and I honestly was starting to like get kind of sad. Like I, I mean, it'll be nice to, you know, get away and I'll touch on that more later, but you know, I've, this has just been a truly incredible experience and everything from falling in love with the sport of bobsled, um, learning about a lot about myself as an athlete, um, even just in the short time I've been here, and just getting so fired up for the training and sliding and um, just genuinely really enjoying every single day. And I mean, there were like tough days for sure, um, you know, with body adjusting to a new sport and all of that stuff, but kind of knew that was going to come with it and just have met some incredible people but tried not to think about that I was like you know obviously I wanted to come back here and be on the team and get to train with the team more leading into this year's season um, but again was just trying to focus on the moment what I could control so we did the race um, I will send my video to Connor so that will be here But anyway, so we did the race and um, then the committee meets to decide who gets named to the national team. So the women's national team gets announced or did get announced and then the men's team doesn't get announced till mid-December because they're going to come back and do their four-man races. Yeah, so we are waiting on the call. I also took a lot of pre-workout on caffeine um, before uh, had a monster and some pre-workout so before my race I was very awake um, I also was just very you know just and anxious or also just really wanted to know who was gonna be on the team the good thing is my caffeine didn't wear off uh, well actually it took a really long time to wear off but um, I got all my packing done last night so that was really good so at around 10 o'clock we all hopped on a um, 
a Zoom call and my heart was beating out of my chest. You know, I knew either way, I was like, no matter what happens, I'm going to continue to train for this sport and be the best I can possibly be. So they ended up announcing my name <laughs> and I, oh my gosh, I it took all my willpower not to just start jumping up and down. I was freaking out. Um, and I should have filmed last night, but I just, I really wanted to just soak it in um, with the people here and, you know, called all a lot of my family, friends and stuff. And so when that call ended, I like, I just screamed and I was, fr my hands were shaking. I like was beside myself and um, then uh, yeah, so I called my parents, my siblings that were home, and uh, yeah, just let them all know. And uh, I mean, it's like it still feels so surreal right now. Um, it's just crazy. And so, needless to say, I was wide awake, um, and hence why I only got like two hours of sleep, plus a 15 minute nap. Um, I was fully prepared to take like a three hour nap, and 15 minutes was all I got, so, um, yeah, I just, you know, this, like, I, I just still am so crazy, and there's just, like, like, this is really where I'm supposed to be, and, like, I just am so happy, and, um, I'm just so fired up to start really, really training for this, okay, so, well, now to get to <laughs> what's next. Now, we take a break, we come back in a week, then we are going to train for about three weeks to a month. And then some of the brakemen will go on World Cup. And then, well actually that's still in. Anyways, so we're gonna take a break, and then we're gonna come back to Placid with a national team, and then the men will be doing their four-man training. And we're just gonna get back to lots of training. So it's gonna be really good. We're gonna get some more sliding in, more time on the push track, um, more lifting, more sprint, lots of swim, <laughs> Ugh. sprint work, <laughs> not sprint work. I feel, I need another word for happy, but like, that's just, I don't know, I'm above that. <laughs> um, really, really grateful, so pumped. So, this lighting, I'm sorry, you guys are. Anyway, so now I'm not going to Arizona because I am going to be surprising. Well, so today is my mom's birthday when I'm filming this right now, so November 22nd. I'm flying home tomorrow, uh, not to my home, to my parents' home, and I am going to be surprising my mom. Well, actually none of, only my dad knows I'm coming home. So Connor doesn't even know I'm coming home right now. So I've actually surprised my mom for her birthday before, so hopefully she's still surprised. <laughs> But I don't think she has any idea. Like she for sure thinks I'm going back to Arizona. Told her, I was like, you know, I've been away for so long, which is true, but I was like, don't get to see my family all that often. And I just think it would be really, really fun to be with them right now. So um, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And so I'm all packed up. The shuttle to go to the airport leaves at 2 a.m. So I don't even know if I'll be sleeping tonight, maybe like another little nap. And then um, I'm a little nervous on how I'm gonna feel tomorrow. <laughs> That'll be worth it. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to head to dinner pretty soon. Yeah, get on that 2 a.m. shuttle because it's a two hour drive to the airport from here. And then my flight's not till 6.30. And then I'll make sure to film um, when I get home. And thank you so much for all the love, all the messages, the support, just throughout this whole thing. And I'm so excited to continue to bring you guys on this journey with me. And I can't wait to see where it goes. I feel like I look like I'm about to fall asleep right now. Also, I'm thinking that because I'm going to be back here, and I mean, it's almost December, uh, I feel like I need a little Christmas tree of some sort. Not a real one. Probably get like a little baby fake one, but I think that'd be really fun. But yeah, I think I'm gonna rent some Christmas movies for the flight home, except I feel like I may not even be awake for them, but just in case. That's gonna be it for now, and I will see you guys in Illinois. <laughs> I think you're going
the gym and I'm back with my favorite workout buddy slash my favorite uh, editor as well. Favorite sibling, <laughs> favorite workout buddy. Whoa. Un undisputed. So I got in yesterday as you guys saw and um, I was very tired. I fell asleep before 9 p.m. and I woke up at 7 which is kind of weird but 10 hours was plenty um, and now we are off to the gym. I'm gonna do my track warm up, gonna take Connor through that, so that'll be fun. And then we are going to, depending on how I feel, if I feel good, we're gonna get get after a lift. Not sure what it's gonna be yet, but uh, we'll find out once once I get to the gym. Or just kind of feel it out, pick what we want to do. Um, I'm thinking either power clean, power snatch, maybe some jerks, and then squatting, and then some accessory work. So. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Connor Sounds is good. nodding in agreement. So glad we get to warm up inside today. We were gonna go to the track, but it's a tad chilly. Well, actually the cold isn't really what I'm wearing. It's just raining slash snowing. So um, yeah, but we will go to be going to the track uh, a few times this week. So I'm getting ready to answer um, all the bobsledding questions you guys have sent in. 
and I have a little visitor from the newest Fodge family member, Winston. Winston, where are you going? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Can you see him? <laughs> Winston, come say hi. <laughs> All right, so before I close out this vlog, I wanted to answer some of your guys's uh, bobsled questions. So I did a q and I think it might have been last week or the week before, and then also asked some questions on Instagram this morning. So I've got a bunch. I will answer a good amount. I wish I could answer them all, but that would be a very long video. And this video is already probably very long. So I pulled off a bunch and I wrote them down here. First one, how did you get into bobsledding? So I think I might've mentioned this on a previous video, but maybe I also didn't. Um, so back in July, um, Kaylee Humphreys, one of the pilots on the team, reached out to me and um, had asked me if I had ever thought about bobsledding and we started talking, um, had a lot of really good FaceTime calls, um, just talking about what this whole experience would look like and what the opportunity looked like and just kind of gave me like the lowdown on bobsledding, what the training's like, competing's like, all that stuff and why it might be a really good fit. And I was definitely very intrigued and um, it sounded like it would be, you know, a once in a lifetime opportunity and had some great conversations with the head coach, Mike. And yeah, after a few weeks, uh, well, I went out to visit Kaylee in California, got to train with her and um, just hang out with her, get to know her um, and yeah, and then a few weeks later found out that there was an opportunity for me to go out to the Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid and get to train with the national team and then potentially get that opportunity to qualify for the national team uh, through team trials. So yeah, that's, that's how I got into it. Um, are you officially a bobsledder? So I am, I am on the national team now. Uh, I have been told though that I am not officially a bobsledder until I have a crash. So, uh, so I guess it depends on who you ask. So earlier in this video, I told you guys that I just qualified for the U.S. Women's National Bobsled Team, um, which is still feels like unreal to say. How has the transition to a new sport been? So it's been crazy, but super awesome. So it's been definitely the training for it has been really fun. I I mean, I love it. I get to lift a bunch, push a sled. Um, I mean, my biggest thing, which I think there's a question in here later about, but the biggest thing I've been working on is my sprint mechanics, sprint technique and all that stuff. So yeah, it's been, but yeah, it's been really good. I think, you know, I would say that I really had no idea what to expect going into this, but you know, through having the the support of the coaches and all the veterans have been insanely helpful. And yeah, so I'd say the transition has been really good. I mean, never in a million years did I think I would be in this position, but I mean, I couldn't be more grateful for it. So um, what's the biggest challenge you faced thus far in training? Um, I kind of alluded to this just now, but would be the sprinting. So I've never had to learn how to properly sprint. So that's been biggest thing I've been needing to work on in training. Um, other than like sports specific stuff of like really working on the technique on the ice, like that as well too. Were you recruited or did you have to try out for the team? Uh, so a little bit of both. I mean, talking to Kaylee definitely got my foot in the door or I mean, she definitely uh, propose the idea, but then once I was out there, I had to, uh, or I got to go through team trials and qualify for the team. So kind of both. Uh, how can I get into bobsledding? So USABS has a bobsled combine that you can check out. I believe it's on their website. So, um, this year, normally I believe it's in person this year, um, with everything going on, uh, they had a virtual one. So definitely check that out if you, uh, wanna give Bob's let it go. What was your first ride like? Absolutely insane. <laughs> um, if you wanna see my reaction from my first ride, go to 
uh, one of my previous videos, I, Lauren Gibbs, uh, now one of my teammates, uh, was kind enough to film me post my first uh, ride down. I think I was just, I honestly, I was so nervous. <laughs> like, and all I was thinking was, you just need to get in the sled. And going down, I was just like, what the, like, what is going on right now? Um, and was like death gripping onto the sled. Um, and then after, it just the biggest adrenaline rush I've ever experienced. And I was like, this is absolutely insane, but this is, I love this. Uh, what is it like being in a bobsled? <sighs> it's such a hard question. So it's funny because getting into the sport, I was trying to think about, okay, it's gotta be similar to something I've maybe experienced and talking to veterans of the sport, they're like, listen, it's not like a roller coaster. It's not like anything else I can describe. Like you just have to experience it to understand what it's like. And I was thinking, ah, oh, it's gotta be like something. And then having done it, it really is unique in and of itself. <laughs> there's, there's really nothing I can, that else that I've done that would be similar to this. But basically what it feels like is once you get in there, it feels like, someone's like throwing you side to side and then occasionally it feels like someone's like pushing your like back and head down. I, I don't even know what to, I'll have to think of something that it's somewhat similar to cause it's really like nothing I've ever done before. But yeah, after ha having done like my first ride down, I definitely felt like I was getting thrown all over the place. And I mean, that was the thing, like the goal on the first run was just to experience it, to make sure I got in the sled and all that stuff. After, you know, now having done more runs down the track, working on, you know, how to brace, when to brace, um, how to not get thrown around so it's, you know, better for the pilot when driving and all that stuff. Are the suits comfortable? So there's two different suits. So there's the sliding suit and the racing suit. So the sliding suit is that looser one that I've been wearing, the gray Under Armour one. Yeah, I mean, it's comfortable. It's just like a onesie. Um, and then the racing one, it's definitely tight, but it's comfy. It definitely gave me, I think I said this, uh, reminds me of racing suits for swimming, but not nearly as tight. So yeah, like you wouldn't want to wear it all day, but it's not uncomfortable at all. Can you compare the sensation to anything you've done before? Or do you just have to experience it? Yeah. I think it's one of those things, it's just, it's not like, I thought it, I really thought it was going to be somewhat like a roller coaster, but it's, it's really not. Cause you never get that like stomach dropping like sensation or anything like that. You just feel like you're getting pushed and kind of pulled in different directions. Yeah, definitely not like anything else I've experienced. Does it make you dizzy? So this was actually something I was really concerned about. So I get car sick super, super easy. Like can't even read or read anything on my phone for more than a few seconds. Otherwise I get really nauseous. So I was fully prepared. I was like, I might just throw up after my first uh, run, but surprisingly it doesn't bother my stomach at all. So yeah, no, didn't make me dizzy. Uh, are you a Cool Runnings fan? Yes, absolutely. One of my favorite movies. Um, before getting into bobsledding and it's still one of my favorite movies. It's a, it's, it's a great one. So I'm actually, I think while I'm home, I'm going to, I haven't watched it since having been in a bobsled. So now I'm really curious to watch it now that I know more about the sport and have actually experienced it myself. I think that'll be really cool. How excited are the, how excited are you? Congrats on making the team. Well, thank you very much. I am, there really are not words to describe how excited I am. So, I mean, when the team was announced, I could not stop smiling for the next, like I didn't fall asleep until like three or four in the morning. I was just so excited and on like, it's it's been such a crazy and amazing experience and I'm just so excited for what's to come. Uh, will you stay in Lake Placid for the majority of the season or are you training elsewhere? So the plan right now is to, I go back to Lake Placid on Monday and then I will be there till uh, mid-December. And then we have a break for Christmas and then competing would start in January. Um, I'm not sure where I'll be competing yet, but I will definitely 
keep you posted. Oh, but also like once the off season comes around, I will go back to Arizona. I'll do some training there. And then the plan would be to go out to Lake Placid every now and again to continue to get reps on the ice. So yeah. How did college athletics and CrossFit prepare, prepare you for this opportunity? So it's been really cool. Swimming and CrossFit aren't, you know, there's really nothing super similar to actual bobsledding. I mean, other than, you know, like pushing a prowler, but it's been cool through the experience over the last two months to start to pull from different experiences I had as a collegiate swimmer and as a CrossFit Games athlete, both physically um, and as well as mentally, um, just to see some of the similarities from those within bobsledding. I would say that they've really helped me in the sense of like in CrossFit, I mean with CrossFit continue, continuing to evolve in what the athletes have to do to compete, I feel like I've you know have had to always continue to evolve, adapt, learn new things. So just overall resilience has really helped. I, I think a lot of bobsledding in how the racing is and everything really aligned with certain things in swimming, which is really cool, especially since I was a sprinter in college. And so the races just remind me a little bit more of that versus like an actual CrossFit competition. But yeah, I would say uh, that both my swimming and CrossFit careers have put me in a position to where I can be competitive in this sport. Um, I mean, I think even like just out of college swimming, like I would have not been very good at bobsledding. <laughs> like what swimming taught me from a mental standpoint, you know, being in high performance uh, scenarios, that's really helped. And then I think with CrossFit, you know, building my strength and all that stuff has really helped mold me into who I am today, which has allowed me to take advantage of this opportunity. So after so long in the desert, how is the readjusting to the cold? I definitely, there are definitely things that I, um, now having been there, I'm like, there are a lot of things that I didn't pack that I needed. There's a lot of things that packed that I definitely did not need. Um, it actually hasn't been too bad. Um, it was actually really fun. The first day, one of the days we were sliding, I posted about it on Instagram and it was just snowing a ton and it was really cool. It just made me feel like Christmas is almost here. So <laughs> that was fun. Definitely all the layers, tons and tons of layers. Um, busted out my snow boots from years ago, getting everything, all the gloves, all the mittens, yeah, and all the layers. Cannot emphasize that enough. <laughs> but yeah, I think the coldest day we had out there was, or at least thus far, was the day that we took our headshots. And I remember, I just, I could, I could barely zip up my jacket because I couldn't feel my fingers. It was so cold, but yeah, but it hasn't been, it's been good. Like it's, it's been, I'd say it's been a good adjustment. Uh, what is your role after you get in the sled? Good question. So as the brakeman, I get in the sled um, and I don't do a whole ton um, while we're going down, but it is important for me to um, get as low as possible. Um, and then also be able to brace up against the sled so I'm not getting thrown side to side because if I am, then that's gonna throw off the sled and make it harder for the pilot to drive. So it is good for me to know the track and where we're at on the track so I can anticipate it a little bit. Um, I mean, the first few times I was like, I have no idea where I am right now, <laughs> nor was I coherent enough to be able to consider trying to count which turns we were on. But now having, being more coherent, being able to be more coherent, going down um, the track and then also having just studied the turn. So now it's it's fun because I can like count them as we're going down. Um, and then once we're down and we're um, finished the, or cross the finish line and go up the outrun, depending on the pilot you have, they'll yell break or like, you know, done. I'll you know, tap the pilot on the back just so they know like I'm up. And then um, depending on the ice conditions kind of dictates how much or how little you need to break. So like the other day or for team trials, um, I was with Kaylee and she yells break, which just meant we're done. So I pop up and then we're still going out the outrun. 
And then once we're almost at where you take the sled off of the track, she'll yell brake again and I pull on the brakes until we're fully stopped at where you take off the sled. And then we flip the sled on its side and then we pull it on or off the track. And then we put what are called scabbards on the runners to protect them. And then we put the whole sled on a truck. Um, and then that truck either goes to the garage if we're done or it goes back up to the top of the track if we're gonna go again so so that's what that's what I do or did you already start a new diet protocol um, so that's a good question so going into this really thought that I was gonna have to change up my diet or how much I was going to be eating surprisingly or surprisingly to me I haven't had to yeah even though my volume of reps is lower the intensity is so much higher and so my body still needs or i found that it still needs the same amount of food if not a little bit more than i was having prior to i mean on days when we raced it was definitely hard to get enough food in um just nerves and everything but just on like more or less regular training days like sticking to the same uh the same macro breakdown so um, yeah, so nothing, nothing really new, um, and still eating pretty much the same stuff. The dining hall food at the OTC has been good and, uh, fits in well with what I was already doing. So yeah, so still weighing everything out, all that stuff, but yeah, no real differences. How long have you been doing this? I went out to Lake Placid in, on September 18th, quarantine for a week, and then started training on the push track and stuff. And then we did not start sliding until I believe it was very early in November. Um, I forget the, the exact date. So maybe like three-ish weeks, like in, in a real bobsled. What's the top speed you've hit so far? So I think, um, so when we were doing team trials, they were calling out, there's a, like an announcer guy who is calling out times at certain, um, points along the track and also the speed that they're going and i think i heard like around like mid 70s is it fun yes main training focus now on bobsled preparation so the main things would be so the pushing like actual pushing technique both on the push track biggest one on the ice lifting focusing on strength uh power being explosive and then um, sprinting, so which I'm actually gonna go do a little sprint workout today. Luckily we found a gym that has an indoor track because it is not nice outside. I mean, I can handle the cold. It's not very, it's pretty cold, but it's also raining a ton. So not trying to do that. So yeah, indoor track it is. Well, I think that's it. So just hit the camera limit, which means that's a good time to <laughs> end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And so like, if you have, if you guys have any other questions, leave them here or message me on Instagram. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And seriously, thank you so, so much for supporting me through this, for all the messages that I've been getting. Um, yeah, you guys are really the best. I'm gonna go get my sprinting on and I will see you guys in the next one. Yeah.